Hello and welcome back to another video. This will probably be my last experiment that I'm going to be doing with Adabox, at least the first one of it, until I have some new experiments later, or the second Adabox comes out. So what I've built here is just putting the NeoPixel feather wing or the uh, NeoPixel shield on top of the feather and I've added some push buttons to a circuit that I'm going to have and you can run the NeoPixel standard strand test um, if you want to but I've built a couple of cool effects mostly for NeoPixel rings or NeoPixel strips but uh, it works just as well as this it's just a 32 uh, NeoPixel because we have 4x8 on the actual shield so the first one I'm going to be running is NeoPixel button cycle which is just a very simple rendition of the button cycling example from the NeoPixel library in which I have two push buttons um, one which pushes me forward and then one which pushes me backwards if I want to kind of skip to the next or previous animations and so here I'm just checking for the buttons and then I have my giant switch with all the different animations that I want to go through and the functions for those um, animations are at the very bottom afterwards so I'm going to run through this and then afterwards, I'm going to run through my special effects, which is similar, but these effects uh, really only shine when they're continuously being done in a loop. So I'm just going to comment these in and out and re-upload them to the uh, feather so you can see those uninterrupted. And I'll kind of explain what's going on as I hit them. So without further ado, press next. We're going to be doing a pink color swipe then a red one, orange, yellow. It's a little hard to see on the camera, so I'll try and give a good focus. Here's green, blue, purple. Here's our running white, red, and blue. Here's the rainbow effect that looks really nice. Just cycling through the entire rainbow. Here's what I believe they call rainbow cycle, where it's kind of going the entire length of the strip, but since this is more of a grid, um, it kind of cycles upwards. Still looks pretty nice. Next we're going to go into the uh, theater chase that's rainbow. And these are all standard ones that come with the library. I'm going to get into a couple different ones that I've created individually. And really this circuit is very simple. I just have ground and power to the actual feather and then two push buttons with 10k resistors on either side. Um, both the buttons have power and ground and then they have one pin on the grounded side of the resistor. Going to analog, or digital, sorry, uh, 13 and 12 I believe. So this one's a custom rainbow one that I did, um, which instead of going through the entire strip, it kind of takes it as a length. So I'm taking into the account that it's a um, a 4x8. This one's really cool. It uses a random number generator to get values between 0 to 255 for the R, G, and B value of a color. And then it'll fill in the entire stack before that. So now we're pressing the previous button so I can go back to that and kind of show that. Maybe a little bit better focus. You can see it's cycling through our eight colors that we had in the very beginning for the color wipe. So we have pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white, or at least my versions of those colors. Um, obviously orange, yellow, pink, purple are all kind of selected how I want to. And this one is randomly generating colors and then filling in from the very back to the very front 
and it gets quicker as we get closer to having the entire thing filled up. That was one of my favorites. It's pretty cool. Next, this one just randomly fills in the entire board, just one at a time. And it does it in white, so it's pretty bright. I'll go back and try and get a good focus on this one. It's a little difficult when half the board is lit and half the board's not lit. You can see we're just randomly filling it in. There you go. This one's cool. We're filling it from the middle in green. And this one we're filling from the outside in red. And you can go back through these, these functions if you want to. You can change them to whatever color. You can change these to um, all the colors. So every other LED is a different color if you want to progress further. This is going to be fading red, green, and then blue. And we have, uh, that cycles through three different colors. You can change those as well. This is just a single color one, single red, a single white, and a single blue. Just a warning, that was a little, uh, little strobe effect. I guess I should have warned you beforehand, but uh, just very, very slow and try to only keep it going for like a second or two just to show it can be done, but I don't particularly enjoy strobe lights, so not doing too many of those. This is kind of like a little Cylon bounce. Looks kind of cool. And you can keep this, um, you could put this in the special effects one if you want to continue to do it in a loop instead of having to go back and forth between it and just let it run. Let it continuously run back and forth and bounce and do cool stuff. This one is like a running lights. So you can kind of see the difference between where it's brighter and where it's not. I'll try and get the focus going somewhere good. And that's basically it. And so we get back to the beginning of the loop and we, uh, we turn them all off because we're doing a color swipe basically of black instead of pink. So you can see I can go backwards and backwards again and we're at the other end of the switch case. So there's logic in there to where you can hit these buttons as many times as you want. You go forward, you can go backward. But now, I'm going to upload this one, which is our alternate colors one, which basically just, uh, the, each of these effects will be going continuously. And this is an alternating color where I'm just choosing red and green Christmas colors. Holidays have been recently and uh, you can change this whatever you want. You can make it three or four instead of just two colors. I'm going to do twinkle. This one just randomly fills in about half of the uh, available LEDs and then continually does it again. So it'll randomly select which ones it fills in each time. They'll be different. And then this Twinkle Random is going to be very similar to Twinkle, except instead of white, uh, each of these will be randomly selected RGB values. So it'll be random colors that I don't predetermine. Um, and this one looks pretty cool, just because it reminds me of uh, some popular animations where it's just expanding kind of like a colony. So that one's pretty cool. We've got sparkle. Now this one looks much better on strips uh, than rings or uh, matrices. Basically what this is doing, it'll just randomly sparkle uh, down the strip. Um, so it looks like it's kind of like a snow effect, but because this is a matrix, it looks like it's dancing all over the place. It's almost like a disco, so it's kind of cool on its own effect. Um, if you were to get this on a matrix and maybe put those matrices in a cube, uh, then your cube could be dancing all over the place. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. Um, similar to the Twinkle Random, we have Sparkle Random, which is the same exact thing, but it'll be random RGB colors.
So this is the true disco mode, I would say. Random colors all over the place. And our last two are snow sparkles, and they have two variations of this. This first one is just the standard snow sparkle, where we have the entire field uh, dimmed as white. And then we have a random, you can't really tell, but uh, all of them are dimmed to about 10% brightness. And then we have one randomly kind of twinkle and go all over the place. Um, and the only difference between this and the other function is that these are uniform while these are random. So the snow sparkle is uh, twinkling in a uniform time frame, whereas this one will kind of be a little bit more random. Uh, the pauses between them can be either longer or shorter. And that's really the only difference between those. So yeah, those are some cool animations that you can do with just the NeoPixel uh, feather wing shield for the, the feather. You can do a lot of cool stuff. Feel free to uh, look at the code and change it, make it however you want to. I'll include the circuit diagram if you want to put the forward and backwards buttons. Um, obviously this doesn't have to be contained to a breadboard. You can solder a circuit together. You can add the LiPo battery, which I definitely did get. So you can take this on the go, which would be really cool. So you can basically have the code for these lighting animations just cycle through if you don't want to have an actual button to press it. And then you can have it be powered the entire contained uh, microcontroller right here and then the header just hold it in your hand you can walk around with this cool little uh, light show and these are pretty bright these are um, at 20 percent brightness is what my codes running at right now just for the actual neopixels but you can tell on the camera they're extremely bright because 100 percent brightness would be too uh, harmful for the naked eye unless you're using a diffuser just you don't want to stare at these because they're extremely extremely bright which is awesome but like I said you don't want to be staring at these so uh, I tone them down a little bit, but feel free to play with that. And uh, looking forward to the next Ada box. Hope you guys enjoy the projects. All right, see you next time.